I say bye bye to darkness. I really hate the darkness. <laughs> Just in about 30 minutes ago, we powered up and every building is lit. Right now we are seated at the staff quarters. The lights are on. The gas dormitory is lit. That's the powerhouse over there. Everywhere is a slit. So it's really, really, really a big development for this school. If you were here sometime back at night, you would really see how dark this place was. But now it is very bright, very bright. The school now we're looking about now, which is Pioneer, they are located in the hard to reach um, rural areas of this country, Uganda. And the houses that they get out there don't even have lighting. So in the early hours of the evening, it's already dark. And movements kind of get uh, grounded. So uh, most of us get terrified in our own rooms when you've locked all the windows and doors. And the first thing that comes to your mind is to try to put the light on. The, the, the feeling that light brings is enormous in terms of security and safety. We are having 21 solar panels and uh, they are generating close to 5 kilowatts. And uh, it is, uh, the power is more than what they need. Now they can, their, their study hours extend. They are able to wake up early, 6, 5. They start the morning preps like that. There's lights of come now. It's like, I feel, wow, I feel like everything is complete. And that gives me a chance also to say that I'm going to work hard, that even I make everybody to feel like there is a girl in the future that we should concentrate on. Well, this one again. There's a for your future in Tabige. We sing for the girl, them are shake them a big bam bam. Anyway. Since you've brought for us power, we are promising. Even you see that even the other senior force who never had light struggled to say that they, they get first grades. For me, I'm going to work hard. <laughs> I don't even. <laughs> I'm going to work hard. When we look at the solar project, projecting the population of the school up to 1,000 students, it means that there's a lot of excess power. And this excess power capacity can be put to other users. Can we sell the power to the community? Can we use it to power a borehole? Could we use it as an IGA with a solar lanterns kit or something of that kind? And I know these are early days of this kind of project, but it's inspiring. I was fearing to go in the ratrins phone call in, at night. But because of the presence of light, whereby even latrines, there are, there are bulbs, I can go there because I'm now safe. We feel much pressure because, now, because we have begun shining. <laughs> the children in all these schools will be able to enhance their skills. They'll be able to interact uh, with the, the equipment, the guidance of the teachers, learn how to use these uh, gadgets, the laptops, uh, computers, know how to go on, online. So the references here becomes a very important thing. Uh, at least now, we can get light everywhere. And even if you can get light in the toilets, you are able to see the whole, what you are going to do there. <laughs> My life is complicated, I'm feeling no bad. That is enough, that is enough. What is wrong with you? Remove me the camera. <laughs> now we have got time to revise well. Not hiding in dormitories. The other time when we were in the in the dorm, we can knock ourselves when it's dark. Now I'm very happy so that the lights are there. I'm a winner. I will never be a loser. If peace wasn't there, probably the feeling that eventually the government will come through and put a school at some point in time. But the question is, what happens to the lives of these people who are there? in the right time for them to get the right education and get empowered for purposes of living a fulfilling, meaningful life in the future. We may have a potential section of children in that area that have been denied lives and denied forever. Thank you. Thank you.